Thunder Robot. <laughs> have you guys ever heard of this brand before? I surely haven't. Yet, as I've heard, they're actually quite decently sized in China. And so here we are today looking at one of their offerings, the ML701 wireless gaming mouse. So what does 20 US dollars get you? Well, in terms of specs, you get a Pixar 3220 Ultra Low Power Sensor that is designed for wireless mice, KO 30 million click micro switches, what they're calling Thunder Speed Wireless, a 500Hz polling rate, a 1000mAh battery, and the whole package at 93 grams. The ML701 has honestly got quite an interesting look going for it. It's obviously got a bit of a gamery look, but to be honest, I don't feel that it's overdone, and I think it actually looks quite nice with its gunmetal grey finish and hard sharp angles. There is some LED illumination on the mouse itself, but I hesitate to call this RGB because the colours are mostly there just to indicate the current DPI levels, and in case you don't like the lighting, the switch at the bottom allows you to toggle between the mouse off, on but with no lighting, and of course on with lighting, although the only main difference is that the lighting around the skirt of the mouse is turned off, uh, the ones behind the left and right clicks and the scroll view still remain on. There's also four little squares on the body of the mouse to indicate the battery level and I kinda like this as it's a quick and easy way to tell the battery level of the mouse. The ML701 has an ambidextrous shape with rubber padding on the whole left and right of the mouse which feels pretty nice and I say ambidextrous but the side buttons are only on the left and so I'd say that this is more of a right-handed mouse. Coming mostly from my switch use Omron micro switches, I found that the KO switches aren't too bad, maybe a bit springier compared to Omron micro switches. Uh, there's a DPI switching button here behind the scroll wheel and the scroll wheel itself is pretty nice to use with distinct scroll steps and not a lot of looseness. Over on the front we get what looks like aesthetic grills and you might be looking at that type C port and thinking to yourself, hey that's a USB C port, can I use the mouse wired? The answer is no, no you cannot, that is only for charging, don't ask me why. Yes, the mouse only works wirelessly and we'll get to the performance of that later in the video. Flipping the mouse over to have a look at the bottom, we see the two large feet on the top and the bottom and finally that Pixar 3220 sensor right down the center. Oh, uh, by the way, if the mouse feels really rough and terrible to glide uh, on a mouse pad to begin with, remember to peel off the protective plastic on the feet before using it, something that I've learned from the uh, other mice in the past. With all that said, the one thing that I don't really like is that there is no area to store the USB dongle on the mouse, meaning that it is super easy to misplace and without that, you can't use the mouse at all. Moving on to ergonomics, my hybrid slash claw grip of the mouse felt comfortable to use in my hands but it should also be fine if you're more of a fingertip grip or palm grip. I would have liked a bit more of a pronounced hump on the back, but I mean it's alright, it's just something that I have to get used to. There's no included software for the mouse and the manuals included are all in Chinese, but they did include a printed A4 paper with English instructions, and I, I don't know why I found that to be kind of cute. The DPI switching button on the back cycles between 800, 1600, 3200 and 4000 DPI. I kept it at 2400 DPI which is this cyan colour doing my tests and customising the mouse beyond that isn't exactly the easiest thing as it involves a number of key combinations on the mouse in a specific order and after a while it feels like I'm kinda entering Konami cheat codes with a printed cheat sheet in front of me. Hold the left and right click and press the middle mouse button for the choice of either breeding, cycle or static. Press the left and right click buttons together to cycle between the colors and hold the right mouse button and the side forward key for 3 seconds to cycle between 125Hz, 250Hz and 500Hz. The mouse also goes to sleep when inactive for 1 minute and 5 seconds. Don't ask me why there's the extra 5 seconds, and to wake it back up, it's not enough to move the mouse, you actually have to press any button on the mouse to wake it up. 
I'm not too sure how much I like this because as a gamer, I can see this being a bit irritating as if let's say I decided to stay still for a while, maybe because I'm sniping or something, only to need to press the mouse clicks on the mouse before it becomes active, that can be quite costly. When gaming with the mouse, I also noticed several other things, one of them being a noticeable amount of acceleration in the movement, and this has been a bit costly for me as it caused me to miss some of my shots where I would have usually landed it. There's also this very strange dead zone in the very first few microseconds of movement of the mouse, and this was detrimental to my gaming sessions as I tend to do a lot of that micro movements and adjustments when sniping and not being able to pull those off well has been a bit frustrating. The way I look at it then, if you're more of a competitive gamer or just want uncompromising performance from your mouse, then the ML701 isn't really for you. Rather, I feel that it's more targeted towards a more casual audience of people who are doing the occasional Fortnite and gaming and whatnot and I suppose this isn't all surprising given the price point of the mouse. Let me close it off by talking a little bit about battery life and to be honest, it's been pretty good for me. I've been using it for a couple of weeks now on and off and I'm still at about 50% charge. And you know what? I really like being able to check the battery level of the mouse really quickly by just glancing down at it. Look, I mean, at a price point at about 20 US dollars, I think it would be pretty unrealistic to ask for a mouse that does it all, but I really like the looks and feel of the Thunder Robot ML701. It's definitely nice and sturdy, you know, it's not really for the more serious gaming enthusiasts, but if you're someone who is, you know, more of a casual gamer who also needs a wireless mouse to do your work and whatnot, then yeah, I think that the ML701 is definitely something that you might want to consider. I kind of just wish they made a more performance edition of this, you know? That'd be pretty cool. Anyway, um, that's pretty much it for me uh, for this video. Do the YouTube thing of liking this video if you liked it, subscribing, dropping a comment down below on what you think about the ML701. And remember to get notified with the bell icon so that you don't miss any of my new videos the moment that they go live. This is Yang the tech rodent and I will catch you guys in the next video. Thunder Robot. It's just a strange name. <laughs>